And again, it was um, a compressor fault, but there's not much details beyond what was the issue with the compressors and how serious it was. But that well, just... it was obviously serious because yeah. they had to do emergency flaring. So it was a vital component. And again, it failed because we think, well, and you know, we hear this from whistleblowers that the plant is has it's been run into the ground. It hasn't been maintained properly, which is why it keeps on breaking down and having to do the emergency flaring. Um, they we haven't got more information yet about why this part failed. I imagine it was just worn out. But um, one of the things through that process is um, the continued pressure was kept upon CEPA. So over 740 complaints were received by CEPA. This is likely going to result in another investigation whether by CEPA or the Health and Safety Executive, on top of all the other current investigations that are ongoing. So there'll be another process for about a year, which the Scottish Government will use to sort of avoid any kind of independent inquiry and investigation themselves into some of the issues. And um, beyond that, that's actually led to residents spontaneously themselves calling a protest up at the plant, which we attended on Saturday. And there was over 30 odd residents with um, some representation from Extinction Rebellion Dunfermline and Extinction Rebellion Fife. And I believe yourselves were in, um, at Holyrood with Climate Camp Scotland as well in an act of solidarity. So yeah. that was really good. Presence for the rest of us to shop at the plant and then for the support from yourselves in Climate Camp Scotland. And it helped put that pressure again onto the Scottish Government and to our local politicians, as well as this, as quite a current issue that they need to get ahead of and actually do something for the residents. I mean, I, I think, I think. It all just sounds like sort of, oh, this is this is what always happens, there's fairing, people get upset. But I think there's been a, I think we've reached a watershed moment. The flaring, I mean, I don't know, a year, two years ago when Osmoran was flaring, a few people would say, shut it down. Now it's unanimous. People have absolutely had enough. And the fact that SIPA were amazed at the number of complaints they had, they didn't just come from the immediate area. They said a lot of these people had never complained before. Our numbers just rocketed up in, in the Facebook group. We've now got 3,800 members, which is an awful lot for a pressure group, really. Um, and I think people, people's patience has run out. I don't know if you saw that there was a debate at Hollywood um, about two weeks ago instigated by Mark Ruskell. It had cross-party support calling for a just transition board for Moss Moran, the same as at Grangemouth. And once again, the Scottish Government hid behind SEPA and said, because SEPA, there was an ongoing court action, you know, that SEPA was taking um, Moss Moran, the Exxon to court over the flaring from um, nearly two years ago, a year and a half ago at Easter. Therefore, they couldn't set up a just transition board. It's got nothing to do with a just transition board. It is just the most shoddy of excuses. And I think people were really, really disappointed about that and know that the Scottish Government will do nothing to protect people, but everything to protect the operators. And patience has finally snapped. And we've never, we've always been wary about doing a protest, except we could do a protest if there, be, if there was flaring, because everyone's upset and on the page. But when the flaring dies down, the page dies down, and no one can be asked. And we've been frightened about, and we've had little protests at 5,000 things, and 10 people have turned up, which isn't enough. And it looks pathetic. And we've been frightened of Mass and Moss Moran Action Group of calling a protest in case very few people turn up. And of course, whilst the flaring's on, you haven't got enough time to organise it because you never know how long the flaring's going to go on for. So this was a spontaneous thing that came up by Mary Bain Lockhart, who's a Labour councillor, a very independent thinking Labour councillor in the area. She just said, I am going to go to the plant. Anyone who wants to, you know, can join me. And we thought, OK, we'll obviously we'll go. But, you know, it might be a bit grim because the flaring stopped and everyone's forgotten again. We were blown away. There were 30 people at the plant. So I think I think people have now reached the point where they know that the only thing left that they can do is to protest and to do direct action. And they are, and also what's fantastic is that we've got people in the Moss Moran Action Group, not, not the board members, not me and James, who are talking to other green groups, Climate Camp Scotland, Friends of the Earth, and working with them, and there will be coordinated actions. I mean, it's, it's brilliant, and I think this is the start of something quite new. And I think it's going to be much, much harder for the Scottish Government to carry on ignoring the Moss Moran problem. And I'd say that's, I'll just quickly that's thanks to groups like yourselves and um, Climate Camp Scotland 
because anytime there's an issue, most known was treated as a very local issue and ignored by mainstream press and things. And through our work the past few years, then getting the fantastic support from yourselves and Climate Camp Scotland, I certainly put it on the agenda in Brockbar and um, Green Groups and Edinburgh and things like that as well. And that's given a wider acknowledgement to actually. People could see the flare from Edinburgh, but they didn't really connect it with the impacts people were facing. And now people are looking at that flare and thinking, well, poor buggers are in the state next to that. And the, the empathy is there for the people now for our communities. And I think that's what's helped give a, um, a wider recognition across Scotland that actually there's an issue here in the back of the Scottish government's doorstep when they're championing climate, so they've been a climate innovator and a climate leader. And then they have that, just knocks away the sort of the green credentials that the Scottish government are trying to portray. I think the flare is becoming a sort of symbol of how the, 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 the Scottish government isn't actually pursuing its its green agenda that it's all in its zero carbon strategy and everything that is going on about all the time i think the flaring is becoming a symbol of that um more nationally and, and certainly and and the whole kind of conscious awareness of climate change and moving to zero carbon is now so widespread and so accepted across the political spectrum really um you know and we've got lots of young activists who i mean people in my children's generation you know who think that is the number one issue and I think they are now connecting that with Moss Moran. And I think in the future, that is going to be very powerful.